Alright. You're on. What's your name? What are you doing here? I'm Quincy Ackland with Hackerspace Charlotte, and we are going to make compressed air rockets. We are going to use a single sheet of paper. We're going to use some heavy duty packing tape, not the thin stuff. It has a bad name. We're not going to use it on camera. And we're going to use a launch pipe that we uh, use to launch our rockets off of just so that we get the size right. Our fins are going to be tape. Our nose cone is going to be non existent, but we're going to cap it with some of this tape and it'll be awesome. It'll be lightweight, it'll be very durable, it'll handle 150 pounds of pressure, we're only gonna run up to 75, it'll be great. And we're gonna do it in less than five minutes. All right, are we ready? Under marks, get set. First thing you do, you take your tube, you roll it around, your paper. You don't want it too tight, so go ahead and loosen that thing up a little bit. If you were thinking ahead, what you would have done is already prepped some tape, and at least know where the end was. I'm not that good, so you know, that didn't happen for me. All right, so go ahead and cut your tape off. Have some place you can stick it to. I like to use just another piece of pipe. That tends to work over. All right. Um, in this case, who knows? All right, cut your tape a little too long and don't lose the end. That'll stink. You need this to be the length of your um, rocket, thereabouts. And then you're just going to roll your rocket right on over. If you do this the right way, the extra tube won't get stuck on the tape and the extra tape will hang off the other end of the, the paper, and we'll just go ahead and cut that off. So I wasted a lot of time explaining that. Don't hold it against me if it takes longer than five minutes. That covers about half the rocket. That's why we like to use this thicker tape. You're cheating. It's supposed to be a one-man operation. I think he was working against me. He stuck the tape to it. All right. So we get another one. We make sure it's about the same length. We don't worry about the ends quite so much here because... Don't lose the end. Too late. All right. Throw your piece of tape, tape down there. Find an end. Make sure you end up with about a quarter of an inch of overlap or so. That's plenty to make it around to the next side. And push down. That ends up with a nice smooth rocket. Good seal the whole way around. That's important. With plenty of overlap. Um, to get it off, we're, you just push it out, mush it out, whatever. And just go ahead and cut the end. All right, just a little bit. And you end up with a nice clean end. One thing that will help you get a lot more launches out of the, the tape is if you tape this little end back here, just put a flat piece of tape in there. We're not going to do it now because we're going quick and doing it as simple as we can, but that's a nice little uh, added feature that you can do. The next thing you want to do, pull your tape off. Nobody helps in that, I promise. Um, cut this next piece of tape, fold it, do something with it, whatever. All right, here's another one where you want to stick it on something else because we're going to do our end pieces. So we cut it, we cut down the middle, all right and we split it in half roughly. We find our end, we're going to stick it back on the tube. This is because we want to push hard on it. So, we stick it over the tube. Go ahead and take the rounded part first, fold it over, top of the tube, bring it around this side, round it out. No problem. Notice my tape is a lot bigger than that. We just don't care. We're going to put 75 pounds into this light as a feather thing. It's going to go. All right. Um, that's just two pieces of tape. That's not enough. We want to actually have four layers. So, to do that, we'll split one more. And we're going to go at a 45 degree angle to the first two that were 90 degrees to one another. Wrap it around, curve it, and this actually holds those ends in great for us. 90 degrees to that one, which is 45 to the other two. Wrap that around. Now, this is important. Rockets always fly heavy end first. If you want them to fly some other way, you're just going to be disappointed. They always fly heavy end first. Unless you got computers controlling them, which we don't. All right, so go ahead and add an extra layer of tape here. It adds some weight, adds some strength, holds all this stuff together. You'll be happier for it. All right, and if you start to go off the end, that's okay. Just fold it down later or cut it or do whatever you want. All right. Meh. That almost worked. All right, so that's our rocket tube, all right? That will launch, but the problem is it's not going to be terribly stable in air because it doesn't have fins. If you see your tape rolling like that, it's just the tape getting stuck to itself. This heavy-duty tape is a lot easier to work with. It's a lot thicker, um, so it stands up a little better, particularly for our next application. Our next application is fins. Good scissors are somewhat helpful. All right, the fins. To do this, um, maybe three inches worth. You're going to fold it together on itself. It's important that you push this kind of at the at the, the fold, at the crease first, and then work your way out and up. Not terribly critical, but you want to get about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, whatever, of, uh, of tape stuck to itself. Then you take this and you put it on the back end of the rocket. Make sure you have it oriented mostly vertically. 
all right? You're not gonna be perfect and that's okay. Any imperfection you have is gonna induce a twist in the rocket and that's gonna help stabilize the flight. So it's once in your life good that you suck. All right, and we do the same thing over here to get a third fin or a second fin. We want three fins. Three is the magic number. Two isn't quite so stable. One has way too much drag, or one uh, is definitely not stable. Um, 120 degrees apart, I say eyeball it. What could possibly go wrong if you're off? Um, just wrap that excess up the next fin if you have it, and then on the other side there's not yet a fin. Yeah, that's almost a perfect 120 degrees. So I say. All right, cut this one. Ah, didn't go. All right, same thing. Hold it. Now the one thing that um, is really important with the fins is the wind will catch the leading end of the fin and um, do bad things. Uh, it'll really make your rocket spin out of control. So what we want to do is make sure that the leading edge of our fin can't get bent over like that and then cause our rocket to spiral horrifically. To do that, we just come and cut off uh, the back portion of the fin. First thing we want to do is make sure that they're all about the same length. This one's a little bit longer, wider, however you want to say it. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. Cut this one to be about the same. Cut this one to be, again, about the same. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut two-thirds uh, straight up to the tip. Sharper scissors help. And rip that last little bit. So now when the wind hits the leading edge, it's all the way at the back, and it doesn't bend over, which works really nice. And that's kind of obnoxious, so we'll get that last little bit out. And again, this rocket right here was made in a couple of minutes. Don't know how many. Um, we may go ahead and add that tape there. But it's got fins, it's got weight, it's strong as can be. We'll go launch this thing uh, well farther than we can see it at night. Um, so if you pause that video, the thing we'll do next is we'll go ahead and strap some glue sticks on. But you should stop my time now so that we can find this rocket at night. Glue, ah, glue sticks or glow sticks? Um, glow sticks are a lot easier to see at night than glue sticks. But okay. your choice, whichever. Sorry. 